I'm Steph Hodge with Board Game Geek here with Nathan from Phalanx, and we get to look at freedom today. How's it going, Nathan? Doing well. Uh, I'm doing pretty great, actually. Uh, just at a very more relaxing Gen Con for myself, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, doing good. I think uh, for everybody. Talk, talk about some freedom. Excellent. Now, I love this. This cover is just like stunning to look at. I don't know much about the game, so we're going to go over all that, but I just wanted to compliment you on the cover. It's like really eye-catching. Um, can you tell yeah, us a so, little bit about the inspiration and how this game came to be? Yeah, sure. So the art's actually designed, and I I'm apologize for uh, butchering the name because uh, it is Polish, but it's by uh, Bartek uh, Jedzurjewski. I uh, try my best. Uh, so yeah, so it's basically a, and it's designed by uh, Vangelis uh, Bagaratakis, and it's a uh, basically a reenactment of the siege on uh, Mesolonghi, uh, which was in the Greek independence war against the Ottoman Empire and the uh, Greek rebels. So, and it's designed by someone from Greece, so it has a very kind of this historical thematic background. Um, and basically it's an asymmetrical siege game where one player is playing the Ottoman Empire trying to siege the city and uh, take over, whereas the, um, you know, the Greek rebels are trying to hold out for, his, uh, for over six rounds. Ah. And so how many people does, does this play? It's a one to two player game. So it's really good for those oh, okay. small groups. Uh, my partner and I play it quite often, actually. Uh, so if you're definitely, uh, especially now, low on a group, uh, this is the perfect, perfect game for you. Sounds like it. So tell, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how the mechanics and what's going on, and then maybe we can do a round or two. Yeah, so it's kind of like a... a uh, resource management kind of uh, asymmetrical siege. So you have two sections on the board. and the bottom section, you have the actual siege, the map, where you have the blue cubes and the white cubes, which are the Greek players, and the red cubes are the Ottoman Empire. And uh, then on the other half, you kind of have where the second battle was happening, where it's all the different cities and civilizations are around the area that had their backing in the war. So the blue ones are the ones that are for, you know, for the Greeks and the red is for the Ottoman. And you're kind of playing two games at once. So you're trying to obviously defend or siege the castle, but you're also trying to play a political game and getting kind of a uh, favor with these other civilizations to get more resources. Um, and the way that you win for the Ottoman is if you uh, take over the city. And if you win for the, uh, the Greeks, over in the top, there's a wolf token, and you're trying to survive for over six rounds. Um, if you can survive okay. six rounds. And then a win condition for both is if you can get either team down to zero morale, which is that large number track on the left and right. Uh, going all the way up to 20. Yep. Um, so yeah, how it would basically work is uh, each player would take uh, seven cards. They've got them. Um, and the cards have three different really colors. They have red, blue, and a uh, gray. So the, so the gray cards, anyone can use. They're universal. Um, red cards can only be used by the red player in terms of the action text. So where it says Captain Mahun can only, that action can only be used by the Ottoman Empire. But a, at the top left of all the cards, you can spend to get action points. And the action points give you an array of different actions you can do from movement to attacking to firing cannons, all, all different types of things. Um, kind of an interesting mechanic to it that I enjoy is that if you play, let's say I am the uh, 
the Greek rebels and I play a red card just for the action points. The red player can then maybe wants to play that text that's on the card. So they can discard a card from their hand in order to play that text. So you have to kind of remember to not just always play the card for the action points. You wanna make sure that the action text is not going to thwart your plan or really help the, the, the other player. That's extra strategy right there. You're like, oh my God, I don't want this to happen, but I really need these action points. Oh my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so um, we can kind of, I can kind of just go through the rounds here, uh, just of how yeah. uh, a round would play out. So you first would have um, your opening and this is kind of cool too, to the theme. So the Ottoman empire uh, gets to move five units forward towards the wall, the, and you can pick any ones and they can move up to, uh, to uh, one space and they can only, uh, space can only have up to three. But what's kind of interesting is they can't move sideways or backwards. And the reason for that is not only for to keep the pace of the game up, but because it's also thematic to the Ottoman Empire. I mean, they really had this kind of blitzkrieg mentality of just throwing their forces as hard at the enemy as possible and never backing down. So that's kind of uh, kind of interesting. And then the, uh, the Greeks, the blue player, can move one token or one unit to anywhere on the map, and it's called regrouping. So you can strengthen up a wall or uh, bring more players. There's also black triangles on the board that are kind of really small to see. Yeah, thank you. That uh, and they those are uh, listed as cannons. There is one purple cannon that is like the super cannon that does um, a little extra than all the uh, than all the other regular ones. So then after the units would uh, move uh, move and regroup, you would then go to the cards and event phase. So. Starting with uh, whoever has the highest morale, which in the beginning the uh, the Ottoman Empire has the highest morale because you know they're sieging a town and you're not really having a, a lot of uh, morale defending a city. So as they um, they'll get to start and they get to play one card, which they would um, either use it for the action points or use it for the text. So. We can put out any car, and I would I would uh, go through it. Perfect. So this is for the Ottoman player. So the Ottoman player has two different choices here. They can get uh, three supplies, or my, it looks like three mi uh, minus three supplies to the insurgency, or they can take that top action and do the three uh, the three action points. So let's say we we do that. You just take three supplies away from the uh, from the blue player, which is actually really important, which is also to the theme. The Greeks end up uh, historically losing this war because they last out for a year and they run out of food. Um, so in this game, it's very, very hard to keep your food production up uh, for the, the insurgency or the Greek rebels. Whereas when I played as the Ottoman, it didn't seem like I had much trouble getting resources at all. I was getting a bunch of, uh, I like the little bread and money tokens. Um, and so now you would go back, once he's played that card, uh, he or she plays that card, they then can now, the next player goes and they play a card. And you go back and forth, back and forth, playing cards, doing uh, an array of actions which there are, I think, three, six, there are nine for the, there's nine different actions you can pick up for the, um, the Greek people. And there are eight actions for the, um, for the Imperial players. And that's, that's also something I really enjoy is those player aids. Man, those, 
I am a sucker for a good rule book and a good player aid. And those, uh, those <laughs> do really well. So it kind of shows you right there where it oh, says yeah. one AP. Those are kind of all the different actions that you can perform. So let's say the blue player spent a card with, for three action points. They would again maybe regroup and spend the other two to use a support. How the support works is kind of going back to that other half of the board where the those flags are and the tokens. So support okay. is you're either pulling away or adding strength to an ally that you already have. So if you, it'll say mostly like specifically a certain place. Um, but let's just say in this case, it says Patra. So you can then um, either, depending on what side you are, can either strengthen that bond or you can deter it. And if you get it all the way down to zero, then you flip the, the ally over and then now you're gaining those resources from that ally. Something that also plays to that theme that I really like is that some of these uh, places were actually really ingrained with their allies. And so it might not actually be the best interest to really try to fight for some of these people because they not necessarily will like you. It would be more of just denying the other player the massive gain that they would get at the end of the round. Um, so once you've played all the cards, you get down to, um, get down to one card. Uh, once there's one card left, we take turns firing those cannons. So in order to okay. fire the cannons, um, you would take out two D6 and you'd start with the, uh, Imperial player. So the, the, you would basically pick a cannon and depending on the row that it sits on and next to kind of the water where the row is shows a number and that is the distance that it needs to hit. So if it's on row six, it, you need to then roll a six out of one of those dice to hit the wall. Once you start damaging the walls, that's when you can start, you know, invading or you'll start getting plus to attack rolls to take out players that are uh, on the on the damaged walls. And so you're firing kind of, yeah, those are the, so you have damage and then you which gives you one plus one to attacks and then you have destroyed which gives plus two to attacks or you can start evading through the wall um the uh and that's what's uh, kind of interesting too is that the uh imperials the the ottomans never really used um arabs they were very much uh swordsmen and horsemen so but the greeks used arrows a lot so the greeks wow. have uh, they can use a raid action to shoot arrows from a dis from two distance away whereas the ottoman can only use cannons um and then once you've gotten you fired off all the cannons and they've done your damage we go to the replenishment so now based on those tiles up in the section of the uh, your allies uh, you then get to use whatever on the bottom of those tiles gets you those resources so some are like two food some's like an extra unit cannon yeah so this one is the C and it's controlled by the blue player and at the replenishment they would get two bread um, and then after you have replenished you're then going to, um, you're going to have to pay. So the, um, the Greek player, sorry, uh, the Greek player is going to have to spend food to feed its civilians. And on that far left tracker on the uh, upper board is depending on how much your population is at, you would then have to spend that amount of food. So at the start, you start with, uh, I think it's 16 uh, units. Uh, with that 16 units, you have to spend four bread. And the lesser units, the less food you gotta spend. And the Imperial player has it very differently. They have to spend food as well, but they also have a unique resource of money and they have to pay off their mercenaries 
um, as well at the end of the row. Um, so yeah, once you once you do that, um, then the last thing you do at the round is the Greek player can ask for uh, like government help from in the in the real war they ask for the uh, French, and so they can plead to a government by rolling two d six, and if they get um, if they get uh, twelve or more, then they're going to get a bunch of resources. They're going to get, um, I believe it's 10 more bread. They're going to get uh, three more units. Uh, and I think it's on the back side there. So yeah, you actually get six supplies, two units, and two morale at the bottom there. Uh, and then once that's done, that's the round. You would move the token uh, over uh, to the second round. And you would kind of rinse and repeat this. Uh, the do you get new cards? Th there was a question yeah, so in the chat. Would, do you do you yeah. always use the same seven? So yeah, you go back to um, you would go back up to the administration phase, which is at the top. And so the administration phase is actually um, uh, you would advance the turn marker. You would then. Um, you get seven new cards and you would start the whole new thing. But the one thing to keep track of is kind of in the real uh, the war, the uh, by the halfway point, um, the Egyptian allies had showed up. So if you were to move into the fourth round on the back of the Imperial player aid, uh, it says after the third round, the Imperial player gets a bunch of stuff it's at the very bottom with the period change so they get uh the green tokens which are the egyptians and they have a plus one to cannon fire because they are superior uh cannon users they get um more they finally turn the support at c so then that c spot will normally um be in their favor which will give them more units every round and they're going to gain a lot of supplies and a lot of money right up front. Um, but they're also, there's another action that they can do uh, called plea to the poor. So they can roll two D six and they're trying to get under 12. If they can get under 12, then they get uh, four money uh, essentially. So yeah. After, so after the period change, it kind of really ramps up for the red player, and uh, it gets it gets pretty uh, pretty critical for the blue <laughs> player at that point. Um, yeah, and it seems really also, challenging to be to be Greece. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. Well, and that's you know, um, it's kind of interesting. It was very unfortunate that the Greece the Greek. Uh, or the Greece rebels actually lose this battle, but it was such a um, a heartfelt that I mean they really tried to hold out as long as they could to the point where they were almost starving their people. And when they lost to the Ottoman, it actually gave so much sympathy to the French, Russians, and the Britons that they actually intervened. And it actually was the this loss was the turning point and actually. Uh, uh, get, got Greece their freedom. So it's kind of, uh, it, it's really cool in that fact, but maybe uh, when you play as the kids, maybe you can uh, rewrite history, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal if you're playing the Greek, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was one question from Beth, and her question was, does the game make any reference to the English poet Lord Byron dying? Uh, during this this time of conflict, you know what? And uh, maybe we can. I don't know. I think there may be a card in there. Um, I'm actually kind of interested myself. I'm, I'm kind of a because I know there is a. Let's see. There is one. That I believe is in here. Let's see if I can find it. Nope. <laughs> but there is. Uh, 
there is uh, there's a lot of interesting text that I haven't read that's on the very, very bottom, kind of in this uh, italicized, very small lettering. And it has a lot of, you know, references to the actual war, to the battles and stuff like that. That's kind of neat uh, flavor text in that. Um, yeah. Yeah, really cool. I just love the artwork, not even on the cover, but these cards yeah. are just really, really awesome. Yeah, you got a few comments saying striking board and just everything's just really yeah. beautiful. Um, yeah, we re so, really love the art on it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a, a really cool, like, tactical, like, almost tower defense because one person's moving in, somebody's they're trying to defend, so... That seems really yeah. cool. Uh, you said one to two and players really, now. Can people buy this? People yeah, buy it so today? it just released. Uh, it just released basically now, like within the last uh, week here. Um, it's for uh, $75 MSRP. And uh, it also, there's a separate expansion, which I don't know where I set it down, but <laughs> it's uh, for a solo mode. Um, and that runs at uh, 15 MSRP, and that allows you to play the uh, solo mode. Wow, it sounds great. Do, so they can get it um, just from your, your website or from anywhere um, online? Or or any uh, any brick and mortar. We unfortunately do, or don't do really web sales. We kind of try to stay true to, you know, our, uh, our small partners and our brick and mortars. So... Yeah, support those local game stores. That's that's what uh, well, that's what we want. So. <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, let me see if there's any mm -hmm. other questions. Um, did you did you have um, any other news you wanted to share with us? What you're working on, or anything else related to freedom that you wanted to to share? Not necessarily related to freedom, but we do have uh, just Aries as a company. We've got a really good deal going on where um, for Gen Con and for the rest of this month, and it's in our promotional link at the Looking Glass, uh, basically buy a base copy of uh, Battlestar Galactica or Last Friday and get the expansions for free. So basically nice. get the base game and you get a $40 expansion for free. Sounds really like a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely check it out.